Yo, what's up, everyone? Uh, sorry if it's potato quality. Um, I'm in the car, and I don't often do videos on Bluetooth, uh, so hopefully it registers and there's not too much outside noise. I am stuck in the absolute worst traffic. I've been on the on-ramp to get on the freeway for like 15 or 20 minutes, and I'm just getting to the end of the on-ramp. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not great. Uh, but whatever. Uh, I figured this would be a good opportunity because I'm feeling uh, not so hot. A uh, bit frustrated, a bit down. Um, but whatever. So I figured I'd use this opportunity to uh, talk about Jesus. Um, I preach a little bit. Um, so I, I'm obviously got First Peter up. I was in here a little bit earlier, uh, just looking at some verses. Um, and I'm just so thankful that Christ is our life. So thankful that Christ is our head. And Christ is the one who builds up his body in the full assurance of faith. Christ is the one who ministers himself to us and comforts us and gives us peace and i'm so very grateful that we are blessed god is blessed blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That hope is alive because Jesus Christ is alive. That hope is alive because it's life itself, Jesus Christ. That hope is alive because it's newness. Thank God that our hope is living. That it's not stale. It's not a, we have to stir up some old memory to try and feel a fading emotion of that memory to try and give ourselves some hope. That's just all oldness. No, the hope we have is living. It's now, it's here, it's today. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. God, according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of of Jesus Christ from the dead, we are risen with Christ. Hallelujah. Two, an inheritance incorruptible. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but this dude next to me has super squeaky brakes. It's <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, God has uh, begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Two, to what? A ticket to heaven? Well, yeah, he's our ticket to heaven, but justification is so much more than just a ticket to heaven. We have been brought into an inheritance that is incorruptible. It cannot be corrupted. It cannot be corrupted. Praise God. And undefiled. It cannot be defiled. It's perfect. It's awesome. It's holy. It's righteous. It's goodness. It's joy. It's peace. It's Christ himself. And it's so much more than we could even imagine because we only have like the deepest level of understanding that we have even of these words even of the word the word of god we only have the level of understanding that we have but the word is alive and active and it's deep it's christ himself it is so much deeper than we can even fathom right now and god again according to his rich mercy and abundant grace and love for us Jesus Christ is our high priest, interceding for us always and bringing us into a deeper understanding of him. That's just that's just his good pleasure to do that. That's pretty tight, dude. He's just like real happy, real pleased to minister himself to us, to build us up, to strengthen us and encourage us, to be our peace, to be our hope, to be our everything. He's just real pleased to do that. And he just likes to. With no ulterior motive. No, I'm doing this because, okay, someone cut you off in traffic and you didn't give them the finger. Okay, I'm going to minister myself to you because you did that. No. It's just an abundant flowing of life. Out from God and in us. 
supplied by faith. Hallelujah. And this incorruptible inheritance and undefiled inheritance fades not away. It's eternal. It's everlasting. It's Christ himself. And it's reserved for us in heaven. We got our name down in the reservation book. The moment you believe the gospel that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, died for all of our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day for our justification. You believe that? Mm. You will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You are a son of God, an heir of God, and a co-heir with Christ Jesus. You are no longer condemned. Anyone tries to heap burdens and condemnation on you, guess what? Turn around and walk away. Because we're no longer condemned. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I'm so thankful that it's Christ himself saves us to the uttermost. All who come to him in faith. Again, interceding for us always. Hallelujah. We are kept. How? By our own efforts? Surely not, because then grace is no longer grace, and it can't be a mixture of grace and works, because then, well, works is no longer works, because it's of grace. So, we are kept by the power of God. Hallelujah. Through faith, unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We are not kept by ourselves. We are not maintained by ourselves. We do not prove we are saved by ourselves and our own efforts. No, we are known by our profession of faith that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. We, pro pro we proclaim what we believe. We are known by our profession of faith. We are children of God by faith, Galatians 3.26. We are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. And thank God, let's hop over to Galatians, yo. Galatians is legit. Praise God that the law was only put there to increase the trespass. It's the, the, the law is the strength of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. To show that all are guilty before God, so that the promise would be by faith. So that all who would come and believe in Jesus Christ, the, uh, the, the, the gospel is available to everyone. There is no, no, it's available to me because I've really done it. You've got to believe, but also you have to do all these things. No, it's available to everyone because it's 100% by grace, 100% through faith. The law was put there as a schoolmaster to show us, as a witness against us, to show us that we need Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that we are dead to the law and alive unto God in Christ. For I, through the law, am dead to the law. Do I then go about to go and seek to keep the law through incremental commandment keeping as if that were gain somehow, either for rewards or blessing or favor to make God proud or to clean up my flesh because that's what a good little boy Christian does? No, I'm dead to the law so that I can be alive unto God and enjoy the atmosphere of sonship and enjoy the present tense of our salvation. Our justification is that entrance. Grasping Christ, laying hold of him, laying hold of the knowledge of Christ, our justification, which is by faith. At least that's part of it. It's such a big way to enjoy the present tense of our salvation. Because if I know I'm justified by faith, I know it's all what Jesus Christ did. And I'm fully assured that Jesus Christ paid it all and I can rest in his finished work. Well, anytime the devil tries to come and attack me, any time condemnation or fiery darts try to come over and say, oh, blah, 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 this, that, or you made a mistake, you're real far away, God's mad at you. No. God doesn't deal with us according to our sins. 
And the enemy's a liar. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's a little kid throwing temper tantrums because he lost already. Praise God for that. Praise God for the victory in Jesus Christ. So I don't go about, after I've believed and get my quote-unquote ticket heaven, I don't go about to set and set forth to incrementally law keep as if that, like God's grading on a curve to be pleased with me. No, that's, that's ridiculous. It's pass fail. You break it in one point, you broke it in all. You take it up in one point, you take up the whole thing. And a lot of these people that are like, oh, you're using the gospel as a license to sin. You literally just want a license to covet. As if you think that's your cloak for your sin. But Christ came to tear that away so that people don't have a cloak for their sin because we have the truth. We have the revelation, the mystery of Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have the gospel. We have the power of God unto salvation. We have the word that constantly tells us that it's by faith that God is true and every man is a liar and that no flesh shall be justified before God. That's not just for justification in terms of like when some people say like, oh, that's just your ticket to heaven. No, that's no flesh is justified. You're not going to gain rewards because you, oh, excuse me. You're not going to gain rewards because you went out to put God in your debt by saying, oh no, but look, I went to go do these things so that I could get rewards. No, man. No, man. That's not how it works. We rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We eat and drink of Christ. His life flows. He brings forth the fruit. We are the branch. He is the vine. He does his thing. We don't let, we don't grab the truth and say, this is what I'm going to do with you. No. We abide in the truth. We rest in the truth. And the truth abides in us. The truth is alive in us. So, I'm so thankful that we are dead to the law. And we are alive unto God. How? In Christ. Hallelujah. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Again, so, so many people that want to re-erect the old and say it's so perfect and awesome and glorious, not saying this. People who do that to try and beat the, beat the sheep, to con, try to condemn people, to try to get people to be fearful as if they're not doing enough, all of this stuff that's just to stumble believers and beat them and abuse them and manipulate them because that person that's doing that has is either evil and doing that on person on purpose or is very deceived and has no idea what the flesh is capable of and maybe just hasn't seen it for themselves or they're like they're blind if they think that their covetousness is somehow rewarded i hope you get what i'm saying i'm sure you do i'm just i'm tired and this traffic is frustrating i'm just talking because i needed to preach a little bit um and uh, maybe I'll share this, maybe I won't, maybe this is just for me, who knows. But anyways, brothers and sisters, we don't frustrate the grace of God. You want to frustrate the grace of God, you want to shrink back in unbelief and not enjoy the present tense of your salvation, then surely go to the law. Surely do some vain jangling. Preach the law as if that's the means for the Christian life, as if life ever came by the law, but it never did. Christ is life. It's not Christ is life, also the law is life. No. Christ is life. And praise God for that. When people try to come at you, brothers and sisters, again, like I've been saying in my last couple of videos, just because this is what I just have felt to talk about. And again, I'm sort of repeating a lot of the same things, but I don't care. I'm just talking. Uh, it's good to repeat the same things. Um, when people try to come at you, when the enemy tries to come at you, lay, hold fast to your crown, who is Jesus Christ. Hold fast to him. Have boldness in him. People are going to yell and whine and complain and call us lazy and call us having a license to sin. 
and all this stuff that is on that's just a veiled response they don't know what the, they don't know what the gospel really is then i'm not saying they're saved or unsaved but what i'm saying is if they are saved they don't know the meat of the word they don't know the riches of the depths of the gospel if they're still vain jangling and if they only preach works then you got to you know go off what they proclaim so that's that. Let the Lord handle it. Again, I'm not like, I, we are known by a profession of faith, right? That's what I got to say about that. If you try to give me a different gospel, that's what I'm going to go off of. And either way, if you are saved, cool, but I'm going to mark and avoid you. Like if you believe the gospel at one point, but you're just vain jangling and you're bringing a bunch of mixture. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to mark and avoid you either way, because that's what I'm told to do. And it's not a commandment as if, oh, you better do that. Or you're not going to, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to get beat if you don't do that. No, it's for my own good. It's for the health of my life in Christ. It's for my, um, it's for my eye to be single on Christ because I don't want to muddy it with the uh, with mixture. I want to stay focused on Christ. I don't want my conscience to be bound up by religious dead works, by people vain jangling and heaping on burdens and condemnation. No. So I'm going to mark and avoid anyone that brings mixture. I don't care if they are a seemingly nice person who is well-behaved on the outside. If you bring me mixture, you are gone, period. And it's very serious, and people should take it very serious. Um, it can do a lot of damage. Um, it can see, it can, it can, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. It can seep in and really cause you to... Uh, get angry with God thinking he's the hard taskmaster because you're not aware um, of the picture that is being painted when people come and bring a works-based, accursed, or false gospel. If it's coming saved by grace, but then it's works for the rest of the Christian life, no, mark and avoid because it's going to make you feel like God is a hard taskmaster and you're not going to be able to enjoy your salvation and eat and drink of Christ freely out of an enjoyment. Because you're constantly going to feel like you're in debt or God's angry with you or God's not proud of you or you're not doing enough or this and that. And it's always going to be me, 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 self-focused, law, condemnation, and death. And there's going to be no satisfying meal for you to sit down and eat because all you're eating is garbage, a lot of hot garbage. If it's law and leaven and mixture and... False gospels, cursed gospels, all that up, or all that other stuff, or bring the kingdom here now, get out and declare and decree and all this stuff. Just like, dude, shut up. <laughs> Sorry if that's harsh, but I'm just like, oh my gosh, dude. But that's why I said it's, it's a very serious topic, and we need, brothers and sisters, if you're out there and you're listening to this video and you are still listening to channels that are all about sensationalism and the roller coaster of dopamine hits and news this and news that. Sure, you can look at some of like news stuff, but the sensationalism is absolute junk food. It's not Christ. It is a playing on the flesh. And the, again, the dopamine hits and people are high because they think it's happened and then down because, oh, it didn't come. And high because they think something's pointing to it and down because it's not doing anything, blah, blah. Because you're looking for something that has no signs through earthly signs. We know the season we're in, brothers and sisters. We know the season. Our focus should be Christ and getting to know him and <laughs> enjoying him. And there's no demand on that. Cause I say, I say that from a place of like, cause right now this doesn't feel like a demand. I just, I'm just down. So I just wanted to hang out with Jesus and talk, you know, because when there does feel like there's a demand, like, Oh, you should be enjoying Christ. You shouldn't be irritated. Well, then it's going to make me more irritated because I'm turning enjoying Christ into a law. I'm turning it into a burden. No, just chill. Give us some time. Lord's praying for us. Lord's interceding for us. He's got it all under control. He brings us into refreshing. He brings himself as meat and drink to us, opens our mouths, pours it back, chews it for us because we are very, very weak. And he is very, very good and faithful and loving and kind. 
he is the bee's knees. He's the best, yo. <laughs> um, it's serious. I know I keep getting off tangent. It's serious. If you're listening to this video and you're still listening to some of that garbage, and you're still list listening to people who feign jangle because you like drama, or if it's not drama, but it's still vain jangling, or they've got some pet doctrine that they won't let go of that brings in condemnation and uh, philosophies and vain deceit and all this stuff, Colossians 2, 7, and 8, or something like that. If it's any of that stuff, genealogies, all these things, all these fables, and blah, 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 nonstop. If it's something other than Christ right now, you need to be very careful about what you are listening to and eating, because that's your diet. What you're intaking is your diet. And again, that's not like a be super strict about that in terms of like be real on top of it for everything. But what I mean by that is, again, if there is a mixture that you are listening to and you're wondering why you keep falling back and forth and going under condemnation and wondering if you're saved or is God mad at me or all this stuff, stop. Stop listening to those people. Plain and simple. Um, I like don't listen to nearly anything anymore. Um, that doesn't make me better or worse. That's just where I'm at right now. I listen to a couple of things here and there. Um, like I'm enjoying Dave, uh, David Benjamin's. I'm enjoying his, um, what was it Timothy right now? I'm enjoying some of that stuff. Um, but I don't like, I don't listen to anything. Um, and Greg Jackson is always encouraging and give and bringing the gospel the pure gospel and encouraging nonstop praying for you, man. That's uh, praying for all you guys. I know it's, uh, it's tough. Um, but we have, again, I just, my screen name for some stuff is living hope just cause I'm like, that, that right there resonates with me so much because that's what I had been looking for for so long. I just wanted some hope to hold on to. And now Jesus Christ is holding on to me and he's my living hope. And I'm doing my best to hold on to him with the very, very, very little strength that I have. And praise God, it's enough because in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. He's not going to let go of me. He's not going to let go of you, brothers and sisters. He doesn't lose a single one. Right there, more living hope. It's just, it is a perfect positive feedback loop of one point of the word of scripture of Christ himself leads to another awesome, perfect little tidbit of truth of Christ himself of life. And it just leads to another and another and another. It's awesome. He's perfect and he loves us. He's perfect and he's not ashamed to call us brethren. He gave up his life. He shed his own blood for us on the cross so that we could be brought home. He shed his blood. He was buried. And thank you, Lord, he was risen again. And he gives eternal life to all who come to him in faith. And again, brothers and sisters, listen, man, you are no longer condemned. I think that's uh, I think that's John 5:24. You are no longer condemned. And what is it? Wrote in Romans 8:1. There's there is now for no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation for us. You make a mistake, <laughs> come to Jesus. Accept that you have presently the grace of God always on your side, always. You always have the grace of God. It was poured out infinitely on that cross. Praise the Lord. Anytime anything happens, you make a mistake, something, something goes wrong, something goes south, whatever. You do something dumb, like me, I do, I do dumb stuff all the time. I'm making mistakes left and right. I'm trying really hard not to get mad at myself because I didn't really grow up in an environment where I could like make mistakes and it was okay um either in academics or was it if it was sports or in relationships like you make a mistake it's like ever, the world is crashing down um but like the lord has helped me through that 
So like you make a mistake. I sometimes want to sit here and just beat myself up and get super angry and just like, you're a piece of garbage. You're going to amount to nothing. You can't do anything, blah, blah, blah. You're useless. And then the, the Lord always interceding for us. He's always singing songs of peace and joy over us. And I just got to let the flesh be crucified and stay there and turn my focus. That's that laboring to enter into rest. Turn my focus away from getting angry or getting frustrated or getting down on myself or getting beat up or feeling sad or whatever. And, or lonely and be like, you know what, Jesus, you said you got me. Mistake is a mistake. It's not a big deal. You already knew it all and you already paid for it all. So thank you and hallelujah. If a legalist or a works justification has a problem with the fact that I just said, he already knew what I was going to do and he already paid for it. So I can rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. If you have a problem with that, you have a problem with the word of God. You have a problem with God's method of justification. You have a problem with the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ. And that's a very serious thing you should think about. <laughs> and I pray that you come to the truth. I pray that you hear what Jesus Christ is, is saying to us. The gospel, words of peace, words of life. He died for all of our sins, past, present, and future. He was buried and he rose again on the third day for our justification. You, We believe. We have life. We have hope. We have joy. We have peace. We have grace. We have Christ himself. We are the children of God by faith. So thank God, brothers and sisters, for the growing up in the full assurance of faith. Praise God that there is great reward in our confidence. And to me, I just take that that great reward is the present tense enjoyment of my salvation right now. There is great reward in our confidence. And it's the fact that when condemnation tries to come, the truth, the truth is louder. The truth of God's grace, the truth of God's love, the truth of Jesus Christ and his finished redemptive work, it's louder than the condemnation. And we can take God at his word. I challenge you to take God at his word. <laughs> take God at his word. He is faithful. He is awesome. And he loves us. And again, he's not, he's not ashamed to call his brethren. Man, we have an inheritance. Incorruptible, undefiled, reserved for, fadeth not away, reserved for us in heaven. It's coming soon. <laughs> to a theater near you. Uh, nah, but uh, yeah, we know the season we're in. And uh, I just want, I want Christ. I know you want Christ, brothers and sisters. We all want Christ. And we're going to see him face to face. We're going to be made like him. It's going to be legit. It's going to be the best. And we're going to be singing and dancing for eternity. It's going to be awesome. Just full of joy. Just, just imagine, just completely and utterly satisfied and at peace. Ah. Thank you, Lord. All right, brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed this. Just a random little talk. Uh, God bless. Pray you're all doing well. Hang in there. I know we have little strength, but God is faithful. Christ is faithful. He's interceding for us. He's got you 100%. Without a doubt. He's got it. All day, every day. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We have the victory in Christ. All right. See you.